know, Rick, you just, when you started talking about your orthopedic surgeon friend or, or that guy being able to go, he helped you expedite communication with him. And so that got me thinking too. I don't know if you guys have ever done this too, even with patients. I know in wound care, I, I want to know if my patients are going bad or if something's happening. So I would freely give out my number to my patients. And mm -hmm. it's interesting because I found that they never abuse that. Almost never call. I had the same experience. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And, and you know what? It, it's almost like that. Maybe it's because of wound care, because we get to know our patients and we'd see them frequently. And they would always respect my time too. Mm -hmm. But I would say, please do not be af afraid to call me. I, I will, you know, I want you to call me if, if mm -hmm. something happens. Listen, I, I, I found the same thing when I was doing highly complicated surgery in the operating room day in and day out. Uh, I just, uh, you, you know, in all the years that I did that, I had maybe two uh, uh, really idiotic calls. And uh, that's a pretty good record considering uh, the number of people that I operated on. And Randy, let me ask you this, in, in reviewing mentally in your mind with, uh, you know, some of those calls, um, you know, I certainly would much rather have somebody call me before it turns into a disaster. Of course. Can you recall any potential disasters that were averted because somebody did, um, you know, get in touch with you? Absolutely. You know, uh, there, there were, uh, fortunately, um, uh, not a great number of those, but uh, there were uh, a few, two or three perhaps over those years where before they even got to the end of the first sentence, I said, meet me in the emergency room. I need right. to see you right now. Mm -hmm. But yep. uh, yeah, uh, that, uh, that, that, that sort of thing uh, is really critical. Uh, and I was very happy uh, that, uh, that they were able to get to me directly. And it did some, um, do you think that that um, approachability or that accessibility with your patients is something that you also saw your colleagues taking on that kind of mindset or, or did you see more of a pushback? Like don't ever call, you know, like mm -hmm. you never give out their number, call the answering service or call 911 or whatever. I, I wouldn't know what the uh, statistical array would look like, uh, but you saw uh, instances of both and, and variations on all those things. Uh, some people uh, just in their approach to what we do uh, and recognizing the fact that um, patients will get into trouble. Uh, some people take the, the attitude that it's not healthy for me and it's not healthy for the patient to be always available. And I, I'm going to respect that. You know, if they've got somebody that's on call for them uh, and uh, you know that your patient can get in touch with that person, it's a perfectly reasonable way to do it. Um, you know, my, my approach is uh, that even if I'm not on call, it's perfectly all right with me if the patient calls me and I can call the guy on call because I know he's going to answer me when I call. Uh, and expedite the whole process. Uh, I just, you know, I, I, I'm just like you. I, I've never uh, uh, feared that patients would abuse that privilege, and indeed, uh, they almost never did. Thank you so much for joining us for this discussion today. If you'd like to learn more about our guest, head on over to our Patreon page, where you can access exclusive content including the full segment of our show. Never want to miss an Inside the Doctor's Lounge clip? Be sure to click the subscribe button to our MD Coaches YouTube channel. As always, we appreciate suggestions for future show topics. Let us know what you're thinking in the comments below. And finally, special thanks to Ryan Jones, who created and performs our theme music for the show.